Okay, let's simplify some more radicals, but this time we're going to have to do a little bit of multiplying before the simplifying. So let me just remind you of a property, and that is that the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of a times b. Okay, a times b. So we're going to use that property here. So that means that the square root of 3 times the square root of 15 is the square root of 3 times 15, and 3 times 15 is 45. So this is good. We multiplied, but now we have to simplify. Okay, now we have to simplify. So we're going to write 45 as a product of its prime factors. So we know that's going to be 3 and 15 and then that's 3 and 5. There we go. So instead of writing the square root of 45, we can write the square root of 3 times 3 times 5. And then remember, because it's square root, for every pair you have, you circle it, cross it out, and bring one outside. So you end up with your answer being 3 root 5. Perfect. Now there is another way to do this, and Personally, if I were doing this problem, I would not have done it the way I just did it. I would do it this other way. So let me show you this other way. I'm going to move to blue so that you can see. So this is just simply another way. And I'm not going to tell you that one way is better than the other because you actually have to look at the specific problem and one way might be better than the other but depending on the problem. So what if I could have kind of skipped the step of going to 45. What if I just saw square root of 3 times the square root of 15 and instead, I made sure they were both already written as products of their prime factors. So square root of 3 isn't going to change, but square root of 15 is 3 times 5. Okay, so then I just, instead of even going, bothering going to 45, I just multiply them together. So it's 3 times 3 times 5. 3 times 3 times 5. And as you can see, that's where we ended up right here. Okay. And then I say, all right, for every pair I have, I circle it, cross it out, and bring one outside. And the answer is 3 root 5. So I would have taken the blue approach for this problem. All right, so let's try another one. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. All right, so how about... We do something like the square root, so we'll call this number 2, the square root of 3 times the square root of 12. Okay, so if we take the first approach, um, it's just going to be the square root of 3 times 12, which is the square root of 36, which is 6. And that was easy. So now let's think about what if I had taken that approach second approach, the approach I took in blue on the previous problem, and instead I had said, okay, I have 3, the square root of 3, sorry, times the square root of 12, and I know the square root of 3 is already written as product of its prime factors because 3 is prime, and then 12 I could write it as 2 times 2 times 3. So then if I combine them all, okay, I end up with 2 times 2, the two twos from here, and then 3 times 3, okay, and as you can see, circle them, cross it out, bring one outside, circle them, cross them out, bring one outside. There's nothing under here, but you could theoretically say if you wanted to, 1 is really under here, okay, and so then you're left with 6 outside, and then 1 underneath, but the square root of 1 is 1, so you're just left with 6. Now, as you can see in this case, the blue way the second way I did it took a lot longer than the first way. So this is why I said you have to really kind of look at the problem and you might not just decide based on what the problem is, oh, I, I want to do it this way or oh, I want to do it that way. Now let me stress to you, if you choose the longer way, it is totally okay. It doesn't matter. Both of the ways are going to get you to the right answer. So maybe you're going to say, well, I'm not going to decide based on the problem. I'm going to do the way that makes the most sense to me. And there is nothing wrong with that. As long as you get to the right answer, it doesn't matter which approach as long as you didn't break any math rules. Okay, so let's try one more example. One more example, so I'm gonna move this up. Perfect. And let 
us go back to black here. And how about this, number three? So this is going to be the square root of 8 times the square root of 24. Now, to be honest, I don't know what 8 times 24 is off the top of my head, okay? So some of you might, and that's great, but I don't. So I'm going to use a calculator, and I'm going to end up with it being the square root of 192, okay? <clears throat> So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 92, 192 is a product of its prime factor. So again, I always said I just do 2. If it's even, I just always divide by 2 because for me, that's just, it works best for me. Some of you might be able to know what factors are. So then 96 is divisible by 2. It's 2 and 48. And then 48 is 2 and 24. And then that's 2 and 12. And then that's 2 and 6. And then that's 2 and 3. So these are the factors. Boom. So the square root of 192 can be written as, how many twos do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six twos. Two times, two times, two times, two times, two times, two. Whoop. Um, and then a three. Okay. So I'm looking for pairs. So for each pair I have, so it's two. Uh oh, I'm running out of room here. Another two. Oh, no. And one more two. <laughs> Uh-oh. I hope you can see that. So it's three twos out here. I <laughs> uh, should have left more room there. Okay, so two times two times two is eight. And it becomes eight root three. Okay. Perfect. Now, this is a case where I think the second way makes more sense. So if I think about it, I've got the square root of eight times the square root of 24. So if I just make sure both of those are written as products of their prime factors. So 8 is just 2 times 2 times 2. And then times the square root of. And then 24 is just going to be, let's see, 2 gets you 12. 2 again times 2 times 3. Perfect. So then I just put them all under 1. And, and you know what? To be honest, I'll be honest, in real life, I actually skip this step right here. I go straight to this next one. I just start writing the factorizations under. So I just start going, okay, well, 8 is 3 twos, 24 is 3 twos, and a 3. And then I start looking for pairs. So let's see, two pairs. I got one 2 coming out, another 2 coming out, and a final 2 coming out. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. I've got just a 3 left underneath. So it's going to be 8 root 3. There you go. So those are the two ways. And again, do whatever way uh, is easiest for you.